Hey, sports better. Yes, you. Guess what? Your favorite sports book, BetUS.com, is back for its 28th year of NFL action. So, here's what you got to do. Just click the link below in my description box and sign up today. BetUS.com, where the game begins. Long enough to cover the subject and short enough to keep it interesting. Welcome to Out Up My League. I'm Nick Diaz. I'm about to ask you to do something that's going to be really, really difficult. I'm going to ask you to break tradition. See, what's been happening to college football lately is you, the fans and the media, are realizing that you've been lied to your entire life. This is that moment where you realized when you were told as a kid, Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy aren't real. If you didn't figure it out for yourself. Well, that's about to happen again right now. The college football playoffs have expanded to 12 teams. And I saw a lot of people say, this is the end of the greatest regular season in sports. With that, it all ends with this. No, it doesn't end. It just ends the type of season that you grew up with. There's a difference. See, you've been fed a myth that college football has the most meaningful regular season in all of sports. It is not. It is not. It never has been. It is the most meaningless regular season in the history of sports, and it's been going on for 150 years. When someone can go undefeated and not compete for a championship, yet someone else can lose a game, maybe even two, and still compete for a championship, that can't be a good thing. When someone wins a conference title, and their reward is play an exhibition game where your best players will sit out, That can't be a good thing. When a team loses a game at the end of the season, as opposed to just losing one game in week five, and the only reason why they didn't get to compete for a championship is because, well, we took a vote on it. Well, we took a vote. That can't be a good thing. We have all been lied to. We have all been misled, put over, deceived, taken in, swindled, bamboozled, hoodwinked, and bullshitted our entire lives. I had a harder time believing there was an Easter Bunny than this shit. Adding more opportunities to the playoffs in college does not delude or water down the regular season. This myth has been broken. It's been broken already, and some of you don't even realize it, because the myth was broken last year when the NFL added an extra game and an extra spot in their playoffs. And when they did that, they did that because they were sick and tired of good teams who were getting one or two seeds resting their players the last week or two of the season because, well, they had already clinched their spot into the playoffs. They had already clinched their spot in the bye week. And the lesser teams who had just been mathematically eliminated from the playoffs were doing basically the same thing. And look, look what happened. Last week of the NFL regular season, you had more good games and more meaningful games as a result. The good teams were like, well, crap, we may lose our our bye week because now there's only one spot to get a bye week in the playoffs. And all these other teams who mathematically would have been eliminated with a six-team playoffs in the AFC or the NFC, now with seven, you get, hey, well, we have to play our starters now. We got to win these games. That's what happened. Imagine if... Ole Miss, okay? Ole Miss would have squeaked in to the last spot in the playoffs last year at number 12. They would have just squeaked in. So, on Thanksgiving night, after you're eating your turkey, you, instead of just watching Ole Miss playing for bragging rights in the state of Mississippi against those boys from Starkville, they instead are also playing for a spot in the playoffs. That makes it a little bit more meaningful, I'd say. Not just for Ole Miss fans watching, but for all the fans across the country at home watching. And on the other side of the country, there's a reason to watch number 15 UCLA and number 13 USC, for example. Well, hey, USC may get in as an at-large bid over Ole Miss. Well, maybe UCLA gets in over Ole Miss as an at-large bid. Same thing with the teams at the top. So let's take 2019 LSU. Sure. If there would have been a 12-team playoff, or even just the 14-team playoff, if LSU would have sat Joe Burrow in the starters and lost to Georgia in the SEC title game, they probably still would have gotten into the playoffs, four teams or even 12 teams. But now, with the 12-team playoff, LSU doesn't get their first round by. 
They don't get it because they sat their starters and lost. Because at-large bids don't get first-round buys in this new format. Only conference champions do. You don't get a home field advantage either. Now you've got something to play for at the top and at the bottom. Yeah, but Nick, those teams can't compete with Alabama and Ohio State and Georgia. I mean, look at number 11, Oregon. They lost to number 3, Georgia, 49-3 to this weekend. Number 11 versus number 3. How can you expand the playoffs after watching number 11 lose to number 3 that way? Yeah, because good thing the preseason rankings are 100% accurate every single year. C- come on, man. That's a bullshit argument, and you know it. Every single year, there's a team in the top 10, or maybe even more, in preseason that finishes the season unranked. And every single year, there's an unranked team that finishes in the top 10 at the end of the season. And here's why. A crazy idea, a crazy idea that we accept in every sport, except college football, is this. Why did the 10-6 and New York Giants beat the 18-0 and New England Patriots in the Super Bowl? Why? They had six losses. Why did they beat the undefeated team? Why? Well, they lost six games. Why did Ole Miss win the Natty in baseball this season? They were the last team in. How could they have, be the national champions? Why did UConn basketball in 2014, why did they win the NCAA tournament? They were a seven seed. How is that possible? Why did Urban Meyer and Ohio State lose to a 7-6 and six Virginia Tech team by two touchdowns? And then they went on to win the national championship in 2014. Why? Why did that happen? Because, God forbid, teams are allowed to improve. You are allowed to get better as the season goes along. You are allowed to even get on a hot streak. This is also part of the fairy tale that you were told as a child about college football, and it drives me insane. Another thing I'll bring up as to why this is better, bowl games. They're relics. Admit it, they're relics. They are relics that are there because your grandfather told you to like them. The kids today don't care. They don't care. You can't make them care. Like it or not, you can't make kids care. The players have made up their minds. It's a generational gap that needs to finally be put in the coffin. Michigan State and Pitt would have played each other in the playoffs last year had there been a 12-team playoff format. Instead, Michigan State and Pitt faced off in the Peach Bowl. And as a result, Michigan State's best player, the best running back in the country, Kenneth Walker, sat out. And Pittsburgh's Heisman finalist quarterback and first-round draft pick, Kenny Pickett, also sat out that game. None of them played. So, I'll ask you, as a fan, Would you rather watch a great game where both of those players played and then next week they get blown out by Bama or Ohio State? Or would you rather watch an exhibition game that's sloppy and not as talented where Kenneth Walker and Kenny Pickett don't play each other ever at all? Which would you rather? That's for you to decide. And you know what else this might do for college football that I hadn't really thought about but I've heard the argument for? It might, just might, create parity. Now, I'll be honest. In hearing this argument, I don't know if I buy it. I think it's a little bit bullshit. But I'll let it loose and you can sniff it out for yourself. The argument is that, let's say if Ole Miss or Pitt, who, you know, are the last team in the playoffs, and they're not exactly getting high-end recruits most of the time, well, if they get into the playoffs, and maybe they win a game, that gives them a bigger recruiting incentive to tell that four or five star thinking about going to Alabama and Ohio State again. Instead, they can say, hey, you know, our school up in Pitt or also our school up in Oxford, Mississippi, that we now have a roadmap to win the championship. We went to the playoffs last season and we won a game over Michigan State and we won a game over Baylor. We're just a couple players away. Maybe, just maybe that creates more talent equity. Instead, Ohio State doesn't have two backups that are all five stars at left tackle. Alabama doesn't have four or five star running backs. The talent gets spread around a little bit, and there's more parity. Now, let me say this. I don't know if I buy that. I don't. Because recruits also see that 
Pitt and Ole Miss don't have the facilities of Ohio State and Alabama. Pitt and Ole Miss, they don't have the fan base of Ohio State and Alabama. They don't have the commitment to NIL deals. Because, look, recruiting is not as simple as, well, we came pretty close to winning last season. We were just a few players away. That's not exactly how it works. It's not that simple. That part I'm honestly conflicted over because commitment to financial resources from schools and from alumni, that is what builds championships. I mean, Nick Saban came to LSU and he went to Alabama and they all asked him the same thing. Coach, how do we start winning again? And Saban said, it's easy. Spend more money. That's it. So does it fix the parity concerns in college football? Eh, maybe not. Maybe not. To me, that really falls at the end of the day on schools like USC, Miami, Texas to hire the right coaches and the boosters to commit more to football. It falls on them. But I'll tell you what this does for college football as a whole. This makes college football finally grow up. It's time to grow up, college football. You're a 45-year-old that still believes in Santa Claus. That's kind of weird. Thanks for listening to Out of My League. If you like what you heard, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Or follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok in the description link below.